everybody. Welcome to A Late Show. I'm your host, Stephen Colbert. Folks, you know you're going through a bit of a dark patch in your nation's history when the president not endorsing the peaceful transition of power is the feel-good story of the day. Because last night, all across the country, thousands of Americans took to the streets to protest yesterday's decision out of Louisville that in the end, no officers would be charged for the killing of Breonna Taylor. Even before the protest started, authorities knew this wasn't gonna go over well because a whole day before the announcement, Louisville police declared a state of emergency. So they knew ahead of time what tipped them off that justice wouldn't be served for a black American. They must have had a source somewhere in the last 500 years. And people were upset all over the country, not just Louisville. Music legend Stevie Wonder helped process the feelings. You say you're sick and tired of us protesting. I say not tired enough to make a change. You say you believe that all lives matter. <laughs> I say I don't believe the you do. That is an intense carpool karaoke. Looks like Stevie's ready to release a new single. I just called to say, go yourself. Still sounds beautiful when he does it though. People everywhere want answers, which they're not gonna get from Donald Trump. Here he is with reporters yesterday after the ruling. Larry's gonna talk about the accounting call about. Mr. So Mr. I'll be uh, I'll be back. I will see you tomorrow. Mr. Have President, day. Man, just one more question on Brianna Taylor. Who's We're at a time right now Who's where Americans feel like it? we are on Say this it? carousel. I have a, a Mr. Big call. President, just one more question. If Sorry, gotta go, I have a big call. Bring, bring, hello, it's Ivana. Ivana, get out of here before you ask me another question about Breonna Taylor. Hello, yeah, I know it's a fake phone. This decision, yet again, undermines many Americans' faith in our system of government, and clearly Trump is jealous, because that's kind of his thing. Case in point, we just found out the Trump campaign is actively discussing radical measures to bypass the election results. Okay, that's chilling. You really don't want to hear the words radical or bypass connected to your heart or your democracy. But according to a Trump campaign legal advisor, if Trump loses the election, his campaign is considering asking legislators in battleground states where Republicans have a legislative majority to bypass the state's popular vote and to choose electors loyal to the GOP and the sitting president. Well, like Lincoln said at Gettysburg, a government of the people, by the people, for the people, shall not perish from this earth unless I lose, in which case I'm king now. Bow before Lincoln. What I don't get is why they would tell us they're going to do this. Are they trying to raise the idea now so it seems less shocking when they bring it up for real? Hey, honey, wouldn't it be so random if we had a threesome? Super weird, right? Hey, why don't we have your friend Doris over anymore? A little laughter from my wife over there. Wouldn't that be crazy? Wouldn't that be just so weird, hon? It's so weird. Anyway, do you ever see Doris anymore? No, no. No, you're okay. Trump. Trump's plan when we wrote that joke, by the way, I did not think you'd be in that chair. <laughs> Trump's plan hinges on delegitimizing mail-in and provisional ballots and any other votes that are not counted by the end of election day. Trump doesn't trust anything that comes in the mail unless it's a bride. And you gotta remember to poke the air holes. That's how I lost Ivana too. One Trump legal advisor explained the push for new electors would be framed in terms of protecting the people's will and that state legislators should say, we've been given this constitutional power. We don't think the results of our own state are accurate. So here's our slate of electors that we think properly reflect the results of our state. Trump's like America's gaslighting boyfriend. Pennsylvania, sweetie, you're confused. You're so emotional. I think you filled out all these ballots and forgot to put my name in. Let's throw these away and watch a movie on Netflix, okay? You get to pick. It's good, fellas. Now, this is, what's the word? Balls crazy. For over 244 years, we've always had a peaceful transition of power following elections. It's kind of the thing that makes us us. 
But when asked about keeping with this tradition, Trump firmly committed to nothing. Will you commit to making sure that there is a peaceful transfer of power after the election? Well, we're going to have to see what happens. So, President of the United States won't commit to leaving office if he loses the election. Uh, you'll have to excuse me. I think I left the stove on in New Zealand, and I'd like to stick my head in it. <laughs> I'm joking, obviously. New Zealand won't let our planes land there. When pressed on the issue, Trump did not back down. I understand that, but and people are rioting. Do you commit to making sure that there's a peaceful no, transfer of power? We want to have get rid of the ballots, and you'll have a very trans. We'll have a very peaceful. There won't be a transfer, frankly. There'll be a continuation. What? What do you mean? Get rid of the ballots? You can't get rid of the ballots. An election without ballots is just a bunch of adults who took off work on Tuesday because they like stickers. Of course, refusing a peaceful transition implies a violent transition, and I don't want that. I majored in theater. The only fighting experience I have is stage combat. Though I do have a black belt in pretending to punch you. Trump's threats to disregard the results of the election alarmed top Democrats who swiftly unleashed their most powerful weapon, stern tweeting. Chuck Schumer posted, President Trump, you are not a dictator and America will not permit you to be one. Okay, I understand the sentiment, but dictators don't generally ask permission. Otherwise, Germans in 1933 would have received this letter. Dear citizen, the new chancellor seeks permission to burn down the Reichstag. Please sign this slip and return it so we can throw it in the fire. P.S. We also need chaperones for der Springfling. Der, der Springfling. Der Springenflingen. We also got a response from Joe Biden. Could you talk a little bit about President Trump's comments today that he, he, he did not commit to uh, a peaceful transfer of power if he loses the election? Okay, look, I know you're just being facetious, but if your opponent's main line of attack is that you're losing it, maybe don't start with, what country are we in? What country are we in? Where am I? I smell toast. But I'll tell you, I actually liked Joe's honest reaction. It's true. It's not surprising because, and I'm not putting it past Trump to barricade the White House gates and put Eric and a baby Bjorn and use him as a human shield. But what Trump really wants to do is undermine your faith in the election. So you go, ah, oh, what's the point of voting? The point is you vote, he goes, regardless of what he tries. We just need to bury him under a mountain of votes because he will try anything. He's already planning on fighting it all the way to the Supreme Court. He admitted that this week when he said he'd be announcing his nominee. I think it's very important. I think this will end up in the Supreme Court. And I think it's very important that we have nine justices. He thinks they'll be on his side if he appointed them. I'd like to hear that job interview. I'm considering you for a lifetime appointment to one of the most powerful positions in America. But I'd like you to do us a favor, though. And in a related story, Trump visited the Supreme Court where Ruth Bader Ginsburg was lying in repose. Now, he did wear a mask, which is good. It protects people from seeing his face. But unfortunately, the crowd still recognized him. See if you can spot the exact moment they noticed he was there. Once again, Ginsburg delivering a fiery dissent. Now, Republicans get outraged when you say that their entire political strategy these days is voter suppression. They get even more outraged when you stop them from doing it. Take Florida. In 2018, Florida voters overwhelmingly approved Amendment 4, which restored voting rights to felons who had completed their sentences. It makes sense. You pay your debt to society, you get to vote. But the Republican-controlled legislature and governor then passed a law denying those rights to anyone who still owed money for old fines. Denying them a fundamental democratic right because they owe a fine is pretty severe. That's like having an overdue library book so the librarian neuters you. Ironically, the book was a separate piece. <laughs> Enter former New York mayor and lawn gnome whose hat was just taken by a squirrel. 
Mike Bloomberg. Bloomberg helped raise more than $20 million so that felons who completed their prison sentences can vote in the presidential election, thereby reenfranchising about 31,000 people. Hell yeah, we got a rich guy on our side. He's making it rain democracy. Tell you what, check his couch cushions. Maybe we can bail out the post office. And, and Bloomberg did not do it alone. Other donors included John Legend, Michael Jordan, and LeBron James. In fact, Bloomberg made the announcement with LeBron. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. King James. Now I would like to tomahawk dunk using this walnut. hey -ya! <laughs> Seriously. Thank you for doing that, Mayor. So 31,000 more Floridians are going to be able to vote this election. And you'd imagine their democratically elected officials would be thrilled, and you'd be wrong, because enter Florida Attorney General and woman watching a bag of puppies being lowered into the river, Ashley Moody. Yesterday, Moody sent letters to the Florida Department of Law Enforcement and the FBI asking them to review allegations that Bloomberg and the Florida Rights Restoration Coalition had violated the law by offering incentives for voting. I'll give you an incentive to vote. If you don't, the president says he's going to steal the election. FBI, you might want to look into that. And we've got a great show for you tonight. My guests are California Representative Katie Porter and Dallas Cowboys great Tony Romo. But when we return, meanwhile, join us, won't you?